Seth devises an expert method for appraising precious stones. Bob saves Les a lot of money with his knowledge of walrus reproductive parts, and Seth provides expert advice that saves a deal on an elephant part. These are the times experts saved less gold from losing everything. Hey, Les, come here for a sec. So people are coming in, pawning their stuff that they know is fake. They're not coming back for it, and we're stuck with it. Are you kidding? Test this piece out. We test a lot of gold. We always use nitric acid. So I'm gonna do some homework. I mean, this is No, this is sick, man. We're losing a lot of money. Seth makes a shocking discovery on how the pawn shop is losing money. Les doesn't like it either. Both father and son know that if this keeps up, they could be out of business. What's the deal? You know how I hate getting beat. You don't know if the girls are marking down 10 carat or 14 carat, what the true assay is? Of course not. Okay. And it'll tell you exactly the purity of gold. It'll tell you silver content and platinum content. I'm we're getting past the old school way and we're gonna make this new school. Bull it ain't never gonna happen. We'll see about that. Show me. I will. Seth has done his homework and concludes that the pawn shop system needs to change. But is it worth the cost? Les certainly doesn't think so. Nice to meet you. Here, come on back. Okay. I have a meeting this morning with the guy who sells the x-ray machine to test gold. Hopefully he'll let me borrow it for a week. It doesn't make sense. It's time to move on. So talk to me about the cost of the analyzer. Right now. Go back to your old NASA test. You got a deal. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now just hook it up and show my girls what the hell to do. Yeah. The expert recommends a machine that could change the game. Les is still not convinced, but the old man is willing to give Seth the benefit of the doubt. Hi. I'm Renee. Hi, Renee. I'm Rich. How are you? So he got this in World War II. Yeah, it's off of... Because these are... Right in, right in, this, in this area here. World War II Japanese sword is worth a ton of money. This sword could be worth a fortune, but Rick isn't sure. He knows he's going to need some expert advice. What a try. Japanese swords are made out of steel. If this metal tester tells me something else, it's not authentic. If it'll help you, I'm happy to do it. Come on up here, we'll get your information. This metal tester easily saved us a few hundred hours. Seth might be onto something. Okay, thank you. You have a good day, huh? You too. And the machine works. Even Les sounds impressed with the speed and accuracy of the expensive device. So was I right? You know, sometimes I have to admit you made the right call. Okay. Right. Good work. Good work. Keep it up. Les doesn't mind losing a bet to his kids, especially if it earns him more money. I'm here to sell my collectible Amazing Fantasies issue and it's 24 karat gold and sterling silver as Stan Lee's autograph as well. This is all original casing and stuff. There's only been like one or two that's been sold since like 2000. Uh, so I don't want it. So it doesn't match anything I have in our apartment. Uh, can we talk about this woman though for a minute? Why would you be in this relationship? I don't want to take this from this guy. Bye, Jay. No. A guy brings in a really interesting piece to the store at the behest of his controlling girlfriend. Ashley only wants to focus on business, but Bobby J is quite bothered about the customer's relationship. Unfortunately, it's not 24 karat gold. Oh, it's not? It's plated, mm -hmm. which decreases the value a lot. Let me ask you this. What else have you had to get rid of? Nothing else, the only reason. The kid's miserable. He's scared to death to say anything. We should have helped him. You can't have this. You can't do that. And would you ever do that to somebody? Can I'm you just go over there and finish what you were doing before? I can have an opinion about something. You can, and enough's enough. Thank you. The gold gun that Les bought from the expert comes in and saves the pawn shop more money. However, Bobby J's only concerned about saving the customer from his girlfriend. Hi, Scott. Scott. How you doing So today? tell us a little bit about your... 1958 Perilla Greyhound. Most scooters use stamped wheels, where these are spoked wheels. Kind of blends between a motorcycle and a scooter. The rarity of the bike. There's only known to be about a dozen in the country. Of this particular brand? This model. So, really... Best deal. Tell me what you can do. Give me one minute. The customer walks in to sell a vintage motorcycle. 
The motorcycle is nice enough to catch Les's interest, but the price makes Les second guess. A 58 Perilla motor scooter. This is it. Holy shit, that's him. So, let's be honest. How much were you asking for it online? I was started out at 25. And then what were we going to do, raise it? This guy is trying to screw me. How can you get more if you have it online for 2500 I took it off because nobody wanted to buy it. It's there. Yeah, don't vote us. <laughs> no, it's not the bull Les and Ashley don't appreciate this customer's attempt to play a fast one on them. I was ready to make a deal. But your dishonesty just pisses me off. Don't come in lying to me and telling me that you got it out there for four grand and you're selling it already for 2500 Next time you try to sell something, don't lie to somebody you're trying to sell right. it to. Tell people the truth. It'll get you farther. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't come in bull me. Do you think we've become what we are today because I'm stupid? Good work. Thanks to Les's expert, there's going to be no deal between Les and the scooter owner. I'm Crystal. Crystal, very nice to Hi, meet Crystal you. Hi, Crystal and Ashley. How you doing, Ashley? Hi, how are you? So, what you got? Um, I have these Vegas stones that I found out of my grandmother's house. She just passed not too long ago. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. I'm just trying to get enough money for her funeral to do what I have to do. Let me have, you know what? My gem expert is coming in this afternoon to look at a few pieces. You know what? If you want to leave these with us, I'll have him take a look. What the hell is my dad doing? He's getting his lady's hopes up for nothing. I'm going to show it to Bob. He'll make the final call. It's a waste of you'll time, see, Dad. You'll see, you'll see, you'll see. Les believes that the stones might be profitable. However, Ashley thinks it's a waste of time and that it gives the seller false hope. Who do you think is right? Earlier in the day, a woman brings in a bag of gems. And toss, they look just like crystals, but I have a gem expert, Bob. I'm gonna have Bob check them out. So this woman with these stones is coming back. Okay. Do me a favor. These are nothing. Time. We never get hits like this. What are you praising that at? You guys, your shoes. We're going to change this woman's life. She's going to flip. Yeah. Les is confident that Jim, his expert gemologist, will give him positive news. This time, Les's instincts are right on the money. You're going to change your life. This could change your life right here. OK, here we go. Oh, my god. So. You're in hard times right now, right? Mm -hmm. I don't even know how to break this news. $10,000. Oh my god, are you serious? Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. My god, guess what? They just gave me $10,000 for Grandma Jules. Yes, I'm so serious. I'm glad I came up here today. The woman gets more than she expected, but if Les gave her 10,000, just imagine how much he would make for the precious gem. These are walrus peni. Walrus penises. Why? I'm pretty sure I'm right in line with what you can find on the internet. $600 each for those and Six hundred dollars for them. There is no way I would take less than five hundred dollars for those a piece. Correct. Just wouldn't do it. Let me just go look. Two customers come in with some of the weirdest items you'll ever see on the show. Les has to take a second to understand what he's dealing with. <laughs> yeah, you're hundred percent right. How the hell do you know about that? Holy <laughs> Bob, he's really proficient at anything that's hard. Yeah, I mean this is it. My guy knows about these things. Right. Make us an offer. Thank, Thank you, you so us. much. Thanks for coming in. Bob is an expert on all sorts of things, including the reproductive parts of a male walrus, for some reason. The expert really saved Les a lot of money with his odd knowledge. Skull of an elephant. Really? It's very unusual. It's very unusual. How did you get it? My best friend had it, passed away, and I inherited this one. To where the tusks were. I understand that. It came from Africa? Yeah, right. Well, so. I can promise you nobody's ever brought in an elephant skull, yeah. ever. That I can Little tell unique. You. Some. How about 500? Nope. 500, I'll take it back. Throw it in my family room, even though my wife don't want it there. 
How about 12? How about five? Thousand. That's as low as I'm gonna go. It's definitely elephant season for Les, but will he be inclined to own this piece of an African elephant? Let me talk to my elephant expert. Africans are more expensive than the Asian ones. Mm -hmm. Africans are... So you don't really want to lug it back home, do you? No, I don't. So, 600. 700. Oh, I believe he'll put it in his own personal collection. It'll have a, a decent home. You are? Thank you. 51, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Thank you. Thank you. you Les consults with his expert, and then he uses that advice to close down a good deal for the pawn shop. Robert Ashley, the deal expert, finds a customer with a car seat missing its base. Can Ashley make a deal, or will it turn into a funny situation? Ashley faces a funny moment. A customer wanted a chilla scarf, but it's really just a bunny. Get ready for a wild time. So in walks this dude looking like he just stepped out of a heavy metal concert. Tattoos everywhere, face carved up like he had a disagreement with a razor blade. He's all like, hey, call me the devil. Seriously? Who does that? But hey, anyway, nice to meet you, Lucifer. Then he drops this bombshell. He's 2,500 years old. Seth's like, dude, you got me beat. Finally, someone older than my dad. But here's the kicker. He wants to swap his gold for some cash. Says money's the root of all evil. Yeah, buddy, you're really living the stereotype. 2,500 years old. Great. I finally got to meet somebody that's older than my dad. <laughs> so how can I help you today? I want to get rid of this gold. Money's the root of all evil. This guy might take the cake for the weirdest guy that has ever walked through the store. How much you want? I could have gotten $650 for this stuff if I melted it down and sold it to my refinery. How about 500? Can't do it. It's ain't 50 dollars profit in this thing. So they're haggling. Seth offers 650, he wants 610, and they're dancing around like it's a satanic tango. But alas, the devil doesn't always get what he wants. Cue the sad violin. I guess we don't have a deal. So there Seth is, trying to make a deal with the devil, and he's all like, I want cash for my gold, and Seth's thinking, sure buddy, let me just grab my holy water. But seriously, with the negotiation, Seth offers him 650, he wants 610, and they're doing the demonic dance of the dollars. But in the end, no dice, no deal with the Prince of Darkness today, folks. Sorry Satan, maybe next time, bring a better pitch for it. Hi. Hi. I'm Ashley. I'm Nana. Nana. Mm-hmm. I called up here and I got an estimated price and they told me that I could get 400 for these. You, you called up here and got an estimated price. Who'd you talk to? Nicole. Nicole, over the phone. Yes, ma'am. But we don't see them over the phone. She is lying. Can I see your merchandise? You need to come in, you need to evaluate your earrings, we need to test them. Ashley introduces herself in a bubbly tone. Now Nana barges in, claiming that she was promised $400 for her three carat diamond earrings. She accuses Nicole of lying about the offer. Ashley calmly explains they need to evaluate the earrings in person. Nana demands $400, but gets offered $185 instead, triggering her outrage. Where Nikki at? Nikki. Nikki, Nicole. Well, which is it, Nicole or Nikki? Listen. It's real diamonds. All I know is I need my 400. All right. So what you're saying is you're not gonna give me that $400, right? No, I'm not. And you're not gonna come in here demanding money from me. Nana insists on the $400, but Ashley stands her ground. Nana's frustration peaks and she frantically searches for Nikki, accusing everybody of disrespect. Chaos ensues as Nana's volume rises, demanding her mother money. Ashley remains composed, but Nana's confusion and persistence escalate the situation. I am because that's what I called for. And they told me that they was gonna give me $400. Now, where the f is Nikki at? Uh, where the f is Nikki at? Nikki! What? No, Nikki! Where this bitch at? She all of a sudden darted away from me, started screaming for Nikki. It was like a bat out of hell. Where this bitch? I don't need nobody to escort me out this bitch. F all y'all. Okay, have a good day. And kiss my Keep walking. Bye. Nana. You bitch. Oh, you mother. Give me a headache. Nana's outburst intensifies and she demands respect while causing a scene. Ashley calls for her removal, leading to a heated exchange. Nana storms out, hurling insults and leaving everybody exasperated. The encounter ends with Ashley lamenting Nana's departure, causing a headache in her wake, leaving the pawn shop in peace once again. 
How are you? I'm doing okay. What can I help you with? Either trying to get a loan on it or you guys can buy it. Mm -hmm. Trying to set up for maybe like once. The certificate and everything is in there. And the bag costs actually way more than that. Well, if you can tell, it's actually stained. Okay. All through here. Then I'm trying to sell it for $150 or get a loan. $75 instead of the 50 Dealer Ashley is in the middle of a purse negotiation. Now she's trying to bargain her way through it, but it seems like she's hitting some roadblocks. The bag might be worth more, but it's stained. Now the dealer's not budging, despite the customer's attempts to reason. It's like watching a standoff at the OK Corral, but with handbags instead of firearms. It costs way more than this. OK, but I'm not going to pay you for the amount that you think it's worth because it's stained. This is not one of the newer ones. This is not this season. I know about purses. Can I get some My pepperoni looking ass. Pepperoni ass? I don't even know what that means. Did she take a look at her own ass? Can I get somebody else? Now, things are getting pretty spicy. The customer isn't backing down, throwing out some colorful language and asking to talk to somebody else, maybe hoping for a more favorable deal. Now, Ashley's standing firm, not letting the pepperoni insults get to her. It's a battle of wills over a bag, and nobody's given an inch. Can't blame a girl for trying, though. Or somebody nope. else? Why do I have to talk to you? Because you disrespectful. I'm, I'm disrespectful, and you call me a pepperoni ass? Ugly ass bitch. Can I talk to the owner? I'm the owner. You're not the owner. The owner is the other man. You you must have. How you get here? You <laughs> your way to the top. The tension's palpable, and the customer wants to escalate things, demanding to speak to the owner. Well, surprise twist, Ashley is the boss lady. So will the customer stick to her guns, or will she fold like a deck of cards? I was just here last week, and uh -huh. I seen this horse that y'all had, and I really want it. I didn't have the money last week. For sure. You saw it? Where is it? It's right over here. Sure. What do you do? Well, I'm due next month. Oh, is it your first? Yes, it is. My first. Congratulations. This is it right here. Ashley encounters a customer who expresses interest in a horse, and she saw last week but couldn't afford. The customer, claiming to be pregnant and financially strained, negotiates a deal. Well, I was quoted $20 for it. You were quoted $20? See, all I have is $10. I'm a single mother. My husband just left me. Really? Yes. Do you work? I try to look for a job and stuff, but it's just hard right now. And this is something that I want to get for my baby. This would mean so much to me. You give me five, and then my gift to you is the remaining 15. That'll be great. That'd be really great. The customer reveals she was quoted $20, but could only afford 10. Now she shares personal struggles as a single mom. They agree on a $5 down payment with the rest to be paid later. Okay. This means so much to me. So let's take it out to her car right now. And seriously, after you have your baby, come back here. I'll have you fill out a job application. I sure will. Okay. Okay, so this is your car? Yes. Do you want me to open it for you? I'll open it. Excuse me. Go, go, go. Unbelievable. I even offered her a job after she had the baby. I think she just had the baby. As Ashley assists the customer to her car, the customer accuses her of scamming Ashley, bewildered by the accusation, and even offered her a job. The situation ends with some confusion and disbelief. Hi, how are you? Looking for a watch, a nice watch. You know what I'm sure. playing? Which one? That one right there. This one? Yes, ma'am. Hey. For sure. Wow. Look at this watch! Like this right here. How much is this watch right here? $75 watch. Do you want to spend more Maybe or less? like a watch like 500 or something. Yeah. I'm Bugatti. Ashley kicks off with a casual, hi, how are you? Diving into the deep philosophical quest for a nice no. She presents an item with the enthusiasm of a game show host, throwing in a touch of suspense. What, like this right here? Now this is, uh, how about this right here? 75 bucks, no more. Ashley's unique charm shines through as she tries to make a deal. Yeah, I mean, let me see this one right here, this one right here. That's platinum. Yeah, I like that one. Oh, now this is real. I want to buy it. Perfect. $5.99. $5.99 plus tax. I got you. Perfect. OK. With a bit of a theatrical touch, Ashley takes us through her thought process, pondering the value of an item priced at $599. She playfully negotiates, exclaiming, $5.99, yeah, I got you. But with a comedic twist, she emphasizes the urgency, claiming she's about to go deaf if the deal isn't sealed. 
Okay, this is $599 plus tax. Hold on, wait a minute. This is worth, look, look at it. Two, and add three more zeros with it. 2,000, baby. Come on. Okay, and it's worth $2,000. It's rare to find a $2 bill that got red in it. Now tell me it ain't worth $2,000. I'm about to go deaf. With a blend of sarcasm and determination, Ashley confronts a potential buyer, confidently declaring, I've got a pile of money, so, uh, so this. I get some change back. The escalating drama continues as she reveals the tax and challenges the customer to come out and make a deal. The conversation takes an unexpected turn, hinting at the item being worth more than a round neck. This is worth more than that around your neck. You understand me? You little chunky, draws looking person. Okay. Oh, you want to borrow my two dollar bill? Huh? You know what? Hey, I'm gonna pick my fist hungry. Uh -huh. You're hilarious. Real funny, man. Y'all be killing me. I pawn you. Matter of fact, that two dollar bill, you can. I pawn this whole stuff. Break that two. In a grand finale, the dealer passionately argues the item's value, escalating it to a humorous threat of going deaf. Now the playful banter reaches its peak with creative insults like chunk and band dry. The situation makes us wondering if this is a sales pitch or a comedy routine. Continue not to go smoothly for Ashley as she faces the wrath of an impatient customer. Despite her attempts to redirect, the customer insists on bypassing the line. Now Ashley, cornered by absurdity, attempts to salvage the situation with humor and fails miserably. Hi. Hi, Bill. Good, how are you? This light should tell it to you. How much did you spend? Do you remember that? That was a lot of cash, a lot of money. Okay. I didn't sell you this. You sold no. me this. Ashley faces a furious customer. The customer seeking a chilla scarf discovers that he's been bamboozled with the bunny instead of the luxurious chinchilla that he desired. Grip, it's not a handshake, it's a ton of cash. Do you have your receipt? I don't have a receipt. Man, you sold me this bull for real. I ain't leaving here until I get my damn money back. Bunny right there. I wish this bunny would just see this. Look at it. Just flying through the. As the drama unfolds, Ashley denies the accusation, stating the chilla is actually a bunny. Now, the customer's girlfriend confirms the fluff faux pas, tossing the rabbit back. The receipt, it's apparently tucked in a peculiar location. Look at that. Ain't nothing to chill about it. I want my money now. It's time to go, sweetheart. All right, you can take that home if you want to. But I want my money, that's all. Have a good day. That was nice on you. Whatever, man. You Around your neck. That's some old ass. Amidst the chaos, the customer adamantly demands a refund while comparing the bunny to Bugs Bunny. Now, Ashley remains unfazed, suggesting the bunny be taken home as a consolation prize, but the customer's not having any of it. This bunny's not hopping away from the dispute. I'm not wearing that old ass That was a good shot right there. You play basketball? I'm not wearing that old ass man. Have a good day. You too. I want my money. Man, I spent good money up in this bitch. Why you so violent, girl? Go on up out of here. Try to be nice to you. Now you're gonna leave it? You wear that! In a final showdown, Tipper's Flair and Ashley bids adieu to the irate customer, but not without some sass and a failed attempt to pawn off an old scarf. The customer exits empty handed but full of fury, leaving Ashley to ponder the quirks of pawn shop life. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Um, I'm looking to find this. Okay. I'm just trying to get some money so I can bail my man out. How much you looking to get? 500. 500? How'd you come up with 500? Because this is a new gig. In this one, Ashley encounters a customer looking to pawn an item, claiming it's like an iPad. Now, Ashley questions the uniqueness, and the customer insists that it's a new gig and demands $500 for it. Ashley is incredibly skeptical. So, I should a new get gig? Fed? Yes. This is a pad that I this is an iPad? It's something like an iPad. I'm just curious, how? How would you use this as and an I mean, iPad? It's something like an iPad. He actually challenges the customer's understanding, questioning how the item could be similar to an iPad. The customer struggles to explain, resorting to sound effects. <laughs> 
You don't know about electronics, so I need somebody else, sweetie. Second of all, you're not gonna talk. Where's the manager at? Where's the mother? It's me. So if you, you want the who, who's over you. The customer, frustrated, demands to see the manager. Ashley reveals that she is the manager, leading to a heated exchange. The customer insists on $500 using forceful language, but Ashley stands firm, refusing to tolerate demands. Me? It's somebody that's over you. Are you going to give me $500? No, not talking yes, to you me are. like that. You're yes, not... you are. I want $500. So, I'm going to ask you to leave. No. I'm not going down my way. You threaten me? You're out. You're not coming back. I don't care if it takes 10 people to escort you out. Sweetie, I will be back with your fat ever looking ass bitch. As tensions rise, the customer becomes more aggressive, threatening and claiming that they won't leave without the desired amount. Now, Ashley remains steadfast, emphasizing that they're not welcome back. The situation escalates, setting the stage for a dramatic exit. Oh. How you guys doing? Good. Got some equipment here. Yeah. If we need some money, we're going to out west. We killed all the deer in Michigan, so we gotta go out for left. bigger and better stuff. So in this thrilling episode, Wes and Seth face two grizzled sellers with Santa beards armed with ancient computers. Claiming that they hunted all the deer in Michigan, they demand $900 to head out west. Les, skeptical and slightly amused, offers a resounding zero, much to their disbelief. I thought that they were kidding. The last time I saw one of these computers was in the 80s. Um, to be honest, if you, um, what I can offer you is around here. There's no way we're gonna be able to help this guy out. The the sellers persist, insisting on 800, but Les holds firm at zero, triggering their rage. Unfazed, Les declares their items as mere ancient artifacts. Now these guys storm out of disbelief, leaving Les to reflect on the Detroit rock scene, mentioning ZZ Top's enduring presence. You. Have a good day. So oh. much. Have you do. You know I couldn't. ZZ Top is still in Detroit. Bastard. In an unexpected twist, an irate man drops and breaks an item. Tempers flare and Les kicks him out, declaring, get your ass out of here. Now, their retort is drowned out by Les emphasizing that they're taking care of business. Detroit's toughness showcased in a humorous security job offer. Take care of business, baby. I know that's so nice. if you need security job, you come and see us. People in Detroit are tough. She showed them. Ah, you people! Wrapping up the chaos, Les confidently asserts that was taking care of business, baby. Now, he cheekily invites anyone needing security in Detroit to come their way. The scene ends with Les asserting Detroit's toughness, leaving us all entertained and maybe questioning our own security needs. The seller aims high at 150 bucks, but Les offers a mere 10. The seller demands to see the manager, mistaking another employee for one. He refuses Les's crackhead price offer, leading to escalating tension. I can go 10 bucks. 10 bucks. 10 bucks, yeah. The seller refuses the budge until he gets his 150 bucks. Threats fly and Les makes Seth the dealer greets a man approaching with an earring emergency because this little red Corvette broke down. Classic. Seth in awe asks who he is, but the man's response, a mystery. Well, I guess it's time to cue the Prince theme music. Now you're just, now it makes sense. Being a I am being a Yeah, well, because you, you know. brought in a fake the truth hits hard like a guitar riff. It's an imitation earring. Seth throws some shade, calling it imitation prints. The man's defense? Priceless. Seth's patience wanes as the man's excuses fall flat. Comedy? Pure gold. Exactly. Tolerate fake items. Bids farewell with a sprinkle of prints references. The man exits, but the drama's not over yet. Seth senses some mischief brewing. As the man leaves, Seth's parting words, a cheeky purple rain nod. Another day at the pawn shop, folks. Now, if you can't help me, bitch, get someone else that can. Do I need to get loud? Huh? What you do that for? You ain't punk ass home, bitch. Watch your punk ass home. Oh, you playing? Huh? You playing? You playing my bitch? Hey, where that electronics at, man? Let's see what you I got. I ran out of gas in, in the damn parking lot. It doesn't matter how much it costs, man. I just need $150. 30. I want my 150, please. I 35. Like, I don't need nobody. Just don't be me. Let's go, hey, bro. Things get heated really quickly. Hey, nah. No. This man. Get off me. Take like I'm playing with y'all. They gonna let me man, put y'all. I want y'all help me out, man. Turn right. Oh, 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 I don't. In this lively scene, Ashley, a pawn shop dealer, encounters a customer seeking to pawn an item. 
with a comical twist. The customer explains her predicament, having lost all of her money at the casino and now seeking to pawn her car seat, albeit without its base. She hilariously demands assistance, unaware of the impossibility of the situation. Too heavy to carry. I need the base. Ashley is unable to help her. I have to have the base for it. I know how a car seat goes. Can you get someone else? Where's it's the perfect. manager? Me. Do you have a supervisor? Me. So I can't take it in pawn. You Georgia peach looking mother Now if you can't help me, bitch, get someone else that can. This customer constantly, persistently pleads for help, emphasizing her dilemma. Now, despite her persistence, Ashley can't comply due to the missing base. The customer's escalating frustration leads to demands for a manager or supervisor, but to no avail. Tensions begin to rise as the customer insults Ashley, resulting in security intervention. To have the base for it. I know how a car seat goes. Probably. Can you get someone else? Where's the manager? Me. Do you have a supervisor? Me. So I can't take it in pawn. You Georgia pawn? peach looking mother now, if you can't help me, bitch, get someone else that can. I need you to take my car seat. Give me my mother car seat. I'm not going nowhere. Let me go! Oh, yo! I don't know if she's supposed to use the car seat or her child. Byron the guard intervenes, forcibly removing the unruly customer from the premises. Despite her protests, security ensures her departure. We then conclude with the customer's futile attempt to reclaim her car seat, emphasizing the absurdity of her actions and highlighting the humor of the situation. Ashley, Seth, and Karen to the office, please. Ashley, Seth, and Karen. So I got the results back from the secret shopper. Uh -huh. Taking care of this customer. What is the first thing you see? Three rings on the showcase. That's not allowed. Right, so one item out at a time. Now let's fast forward, told somebody that you'd come back. I said I'd send somebody over. But nobody ended up coming over. Les, the silver-haired sultan of second hand, calls his court jesters, Ashley and Seth, to the throne room. Apparently, he had a secret shopper, Ava, visit the pawn shop, and the results were not the best. Ashley and Seth exchange nervous glances, wondering if Les is going to unleash his legendary roar or just some good nature pawn. Somebody that you'd come back. I said I'd send somebody over. But nobody ended up coming over. Now, how about this one? Wait till I show you this. I yawn. In front of a customer? Maybe that happened one time out of like maybe the past 20 years that I've been here. <laughs> that particular day. Les unleashes his claws. He throws Bobby under the bus for displaying three rings at once, a cardinal sin in Les land. Then he tears into Seth for taking too long to help a customer, accusing him of being slower than a pawnbroker on vacation. Ashley, sensing an opportunity, crosses her arms and silently whispers, uh-oh, somebody's feeling the heat. Look at how Linda took care of this person. This would run you $1,700 here. Perfect. That's the best way to go. Look at how he's showing the television set. In Steve's report. And let me show you who got a 98 out of 100. Karen. Look at the way that she's handling the customer. I'm so happy I was able to help you tonight. 98. Les shifts his focus, showcasing the shining examples of Linda and JP. Linda, the Diamond 9 diva, expertly appraises a watch while JP, the tech titan, demonstrates a TV with the enthusiasm of a kid on Christmas morning. Ashley takes a mental note, scribbling, be more Linda, less Seth, on her pawn-shaped notepad. 98, the most important thing that we have to offer is customer service. You could learn something from me. A rose, something from a me. rose near two thorns. Bless, I'm just doing my job. I'm very proud of you. Wes reveals the ultimate scorecard. Karen, the customer service queen, scored a perfect 98. Ashley and Seth slump in their chairs, feeling like yesterday's jewelry. But Les throws Ashley a bone, calling her a rose between two thorns, a not so subtle dig at Seth. So Ashley puffs at her chest, basking in the rare praise, while Seth silently vows to outshine Karen next time. Is there something you need help with? No, I'm just browsing. Okay, sounds good. Anything catches your eye that you want me to pull out? I was kind of looking at some of these watches. Okay. Something wrong? Yeah, my phone. I just let my Did you take my phone? On the showcase. 
In a pawn shop far, far away from common sense, a customer's quest for an invisible phone turns the store into a circus. Imagine a magician's act gone wrong. Now add grumpy customers and confused employees. It's a comedy of errors where the only thing missing is the phone that everybody's looking for. Look, I ain't crazy, damn it. I just laid my phone down. You better get off me, because I Another customer in the store. You have got to get out. No, please, listen, 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 listen. Crazy. As chaos reigns supreme, the invisible phone saga transforms into a slapstick showdown. Consider a scene from a stupid action film, but with canes instead of firearms, and insults flying quicker than a swarm of birds. It's like a sitcom on steroids, with each character competing for the title of most absurd performance. I'm out of here, yo. Their business outside. Nobody don't got time for this, yo. Get this old ass. And what's your problem? Oh, oh my for God. You ain't gonna need that cane. Go ahead, put the cane down. Chill out. Thanks, Thanks. Calm down. Yeah, all right. Man, don't hurt nobody. And watch how you use that cane. Shut the hell up. You got grandkids. Ban that. Have a nice day. Now, as the dust settles, the pawn shop resembles a battlefield of comedic proportions. With tempers cooled, the invisible phone remains the elusive star of this absurd show. And when the curtain falls on this hilarious display, only one thing is certain. Nobody's going to leave with their sense of worth intact. Hi, I'm trying to uh, pawn this train. Yeah, we won't be able to take this. Why you want me to take Why are you screaming? Because I want my mother money. I'm a boss. That's what I do. Get my money. You're going to come and get it? One way or another. All right, well, I'll come and give it to you. Yeah. So this guy strolls in all confident, trying to pawn off some chain. He's like, I want 250 bucks for this. But hold up, it's faker than a $3 bill. The drama unfolds as he demands his mother money and threatens to take it by force. Oh man, well we got ourselves a boss in the making right here. Where's it at? Back up. Okay, first of all, that's not real. Do you want me to let you pawn your watch for 250? Here comes round two. The guy's still clinging onto that delusion, insisting that it's real bling. However, they're not having any of it, threatening to remove him if he doesn't turn down the volume. But at least he's willing to compromise. Now, will he finally accept reality, or is he going to keep shouting his way to nowhere? I'll, I'll take 250. Wow, changing a tone now. Yeah. Want to well, follow me this way? Thanks for helping me. Well, take a look at that. The guy finally got a soft spot and finally ready to see reason. 250? Yeah, sure. Talk about a change of tune. And with that, he's off to his next journey. Hey, how you doing? Hi, how are you? I'm all right. Uh, my girlfriend, she came up here and she got rid of my Xbox 360 and I came up here to get it back. She got rid of your Xbox? Yeah. Yeah, she, we got into an argument. I woke up, it was there. So I called her and I asked her where was it at. And she told me it was up here. So I just came up here to get it back. Okay, good. It's not just going to give you your well, 360. Well, you okay. just need to give me my stuff. No, I don't need to do anything I don't have you. no ticket. Okay, you done? Y'all just need to have me my because I'm gone. You going to what? What y'all supposed to have some security guards or something? Y'all looking at me and He can look at whoever he wants. He's right. our guard here. So. Like I was saying, can I just have no. my... Can I just have my... So here's this guy, right? He waltzes into the shop like he's lost his favorite pair of socks in the laundry. Turns out his girl threw out his Xbox 360. And he's all like, I need it back. And Ashley's there, cool as a cucumber, asking for a ticket. Ticket to what? The Xbox Amusement Park? Classic mix-up. Another one? Well, let me just look for one that I want to grab. Okay, you go that way. I'll show you some. Wait, right hey, what there. Are there bro? I'll sell you one for two hundred dollars. No, I can grab one for free. Excuse me. Now, the guy's on a mission, but Ashley's playing hardball. No ticket, no Xbox. She says, but our hero ain't having it. He's all like, "Just give me my stuff." Like, bro, do you even have a receipt? And then he tries some Jedi mind trick about grabbing one for free. Nice try, buddy, but this ain't a buy one, get one free sale. Oh, I got the feeling that, yeah, he really into video games because he tried to warp out of here to like another world, some shit. You know what I'm saying? Get out of here. Get the fuck out. Now. All right, now. Don't up. ever step back. You gonna make me move? Get. It pissed me off. I've never seen somebody run around my store like that. I've never seen somebody jump in a barrel. I've seen some crazy shit, but never that. Then it gets wild because the guy hops into a barrel and attempts to warp out of there. Now Ashley's telling security to get him out of there and it's an entire circus. The guy finally bolts and Ashley's left scratching her head wondering what the heck just happened. 
never a dull moment in the pawn shop. Hi, how are you? Got a little bit of a problem. Can't imagine why. My kids were playing around last night, broke my teeth. Now I have no teeth. They broke all your teeth? Yeah, I had dentures. So they How'd were they bring them? Um, they flushed them down the toilet. And you want how much? About 300 300 dollars Um, so I'm not gonna be able to give you 300 Two? No, see, the issue is it has to be a certain amount of weight. A woman with a smile like a jack-o'-lantern entered, claiming that her mischievous children flushed her dentures down the porcelain plunge. Now she offers a promise ring as collateral, hoping for $300 to buy her placements. Ashley politely informs her that it's more like a $10 promise, triggering a meltdown worthy of a Shakespearean tragedy. For me to pay you for the silver. Right, the I understand issue. it ain't worth all that, so what can you give me? $10. <laughs> buy it. <laughs> no. I need more than $10. See, I have no teeth. Right. I go so to work I'm not tomorrow. Paying you for your teeth. Okay. Well, what the f can you do then? The woman launches into a guilt trip that would make even Mother Teresa flinch. Now, Ashley stands firm, offering a measly 10 bucks just to get rid of the verbal hurricane. But oh no, our toothless typhoon isn't satisfied. She throws insults like confetti, calling Ashley names that would make a sailor blush. It takes one to know one, doesn't it? Chocolate is smart, bitch. I do, and so do you. Now what? I'm here. Now what? I'm here. Keep walking. Bitch, my car's this way. Lucky Ashley knocked the teeth out your mouth. <laughs> Ashley, pushed to her limit, unleashes her inner dragon. The woman, finally defeated, slinks away, muttering threats. Ashley, victorious but slightly singed, sighs. One down, a million more to go. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I like your nail polish colors. Thank you. What do we got here? A uh, laptop. A laptop. You type in your password. What brings you in today? I just want to pond it in so I can give my sister some money. Uh, all right, I can do 150, and that's what I can do. Okay, can you do 165 or not? I can do 150. Okay, it's, I don't know what, I ain't get to. Ashley greets the woman with nail polish flair, but oh boy, we got an issue. This is a laptop fiasco. Now she's trying to get cash for her sister's birthday bash, but the password's playing hide and seek. Now she's clueless and Ashley's like, try again, but it's like asking a goldfish to play chess. Negotiations start to begin, or do they? I got time for this. I'm here to help you. Okay, You're well you have a really, really bad attitude. It's like you don't like your job. If you don't like your job, you shouldn't work here, sweetheart. I'm sorry, you really shouldn't. I haven't even talked. The I way, said I the, way you treat, the way you treat your customers is so disrespectful. I actually asked It's you. so disrespectful. Well, I'm sorry, I told you, I can't you know, take I don't more know it's disrespectful. Respectful. Learn how coming. to talk, learn how to talk, learn how to talk. Have a good day. You were too silly. Sorry. Don't you. touch my stuff, you were so silly. If you want me to- It's a bargain battle royale. Now the woman wants 165 bucks, but Ashley's all like, I'll give you 150 and it's a standoff. Then, boom, attitude explosion. The woman's throwing verbal haymakers like it's a boxing match. Ashley's like, hold up, honey, don't sass the cashier. But the woman's not backing down, even if it means storming out in a huff. I'm here to help you. Your worst mistake is to tell me off. I can take my business somewhere else. Are you else. a lady or are you I a baby? Excuse me, sweetheart. It. I'm running the next door. You think you're really gonna be able to handle that? I did this one. I did all the heavy lifting with him. Give him you coming to the door like you gonna do something? Oh, but, oh, ma'am, you, you need to go. You don't know me, bitch. You looking at me like you wanna do something? Do something. We get folks of all kind, happy, sad. Bye. Bye. What more can we do, you know? Walk away with a smile. Talk about a grand finale, folks. The woman's on her way out, but not without some parting shots. Now she's throwing shade like it's confetti, calling everyone out like it's a reality TV showdown. But in the end, it's all smiles for Ashley and her crew as they bid adieu to the drama and welcome the next wacky adventure in the pawn shop saga. In the end, Robert storms out swearing never to return like some kind of reality TV diva. Classic entertainment, folks. You couldn't make any of this up if you tried. You looking at mother Get the off me, man. Hey, what the you look? I need my 20 dollars. I uh, want $100. No, 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 mom, we calm down. You won't believe how much this customer did when he couldn't take in the truth. Get the f out of here, man. Get the f out of here. Why are you standing behind me? Because it's a bright and sunny day at the pawn shop. 
but hold on to your hats because we're in for a wild ride. This cool and laid back Albanian dude strolls in with a bunch of ancient comic books. When I say cool, I mean it. Like, look at this. Bless. Ganti, how you doing? What's your name? Ganti. Ganti? Yeah. Where are you from? He's got dollar signs in his eyes, thinking they're worth a fortune. But is he in for a surprise or what? Les and Ashley, the shop owners, give them their usual warm welcome. The customer proudly showcases his prized comics, claiming they're from the groovy 70s and in mint condition. He's even bold enough to demand a whopping $2,000 for the lot. What? They are shocked. How much did you want for him? I was looking around $2,000, man. $2,000? But our savvy Ashley ain't falling for it. She spots the bent corners and unimpressive preservation, grilling the customer about their sorry state. Poor fella, he's speechless. Didn't see that coming, did he? Do you see the edges? That's just one of them. Come on. No, actually, that's all. Ashley cuts straight to the chase and offers a jaw-dropping $5 for the entire stack. Yep, you heard it right. A gigantic drop from his lofty $2,000 expectation. Naturally, our customer isn't happy with the lowball and tries to haggle. But kudos to Ashley and Les. They hold their ground, eventually nudging the price up to a massive six dollars. Come on, you guys, just work with me a little bit. Give me something, you know what I mean? Six. I just. And that's when things go from zero to chaos. Our previously calm customer suddenly loses it, accusing the shop of playing mind games. Leslie tries to calm him down, reassuring him they're not joking around. But no, he won't take their word for it. He insists on verifying the authenticity of the comics, and Ashley's response takes him to new levels of shock. From the 1970s. So am I. I'm go for you. Oh boy, buckle up, because it's all downhill from here. The customer starts swearing up a storm, slamming the table like a man possessed. He's convinced he's being duped, and boy, is he fuming. Like you're playing me right now, because this, I know this is worth way more than $6. The situation gets so out of hand that a burly bodyguard has to step in and escort him out. But wait, there's more. Right before leaving, he pulls a move that really ticks off another customer. Talk about adding fuel to the fire. Get the off me. Hey, hey what the f you look? Come here. Next thing you know, we're witnessing an impromptu street brawl right inside the shop. These two customers throw punches like they're in a heavyweight championship match. And let me tell you, it's a hilarious sight to behold. Come on, fuck me. Eventually, the bodyguards swoop in like superheroes and drag both fighters out. Man, talk about a show. After the dust settles, our Albanian friend tries to save face with a final quip. I'm Albanian, baby. Well, my friend, you certainly lived up to that fiery reputation of yours. What a roller coaster of a pawn shop experience, folks. Next up, just another regular day at the pawn shop. People coming and going. Some happy, some not so much. Oh, bro. Hold on. Let me screw my plate. Now, here's a guy who walks in hoping to get a loan of a hundred bucks for his gold chain. And you know what? The receptionist happily agrees. Loan approved, right? How much would you like? A hundred dollars. Okay. I can do the hundred dollars. Well, hold your horses, because this is where things go haywire. This customer seems all polite and even hands over his ID for verification. But then he brings up this 20% business, as it's written on the sign right there. The receptionist is completely lost, and the customer starts explaining how he should get 20% added to the hundred dollar loan, making it 120. With my 20%, right? What 20%, sir? The sign right here says I get 20%. But the poor receptionist has no clue what he's talking about. Politeness goes out the window, folks. The man's anger instantly flares up when he realizes the receptionist is clueless. He asks her if she's ever seen the sign in her life, and boy, does he point it out right in front of the shop. Talk about intense. Sir, I don't know what you're talking about. Is you serious? Yes, sir. Ma'am, you ain't never seen the sign? Now, this angry customer won't let it go. His voice keeps getting louder, drawing everyone's attention in the shop. I'm supposed to get 20%. You said you're going to give me 100. Uh-huh. I get 20% of 100. We see as the bodyguards on alert, and even Seth, the boss, steps out of his office to see what the commotion is all about. The man keeps angrily repeating that he's supposed to get that 20% with 100 bucks. When the receptionist refuses to budge, he demands to see the manager. Seth steps up and asks the customer to read the sign again. 
he patiently explains what it actually means. Another pawn shop, bring me in the ticket, and when you take it out of that pawn shop, I'll give you 20. But does our furious customer listen? No way. He's sticking to his guns, dead set on his demands. He even goes back and snatches the sign to show it to the receptionist and Seth. You can practically feel the tension, folks. If Seth wasn't behind that glass, this guy might have thrown a punch. Clearly, he's not thinking straight. That's when the bodyguard steps in and takes the sign away from him. Hey, come on, straight up, my man, let this go. Let this go. The angry customer doesn't even give Seth a chance to explain. Oh boy, talk about rage blinding a person. This irate customer keeps shouting in the shop, demanding his 20%, hoping someone will back him up. Sir, why? Well, because you're That's false advertising. I guess you think I you're can. You're not letting. But here's where things escalate. This customer challenges Seth to step out of his glass office and face him like a man. Whoa, the temperature is rising in here. But Seth's having none of it. He tells him to get out since he's causing a ruckus. And you know what happens next? He gets escorted out by the bodyguard. And get this, he tries to take the sign with him. I'm getting subbed out this bro. I'm you down for the sign, my man. I'm gonna take you down. The Gotta admit, that's a bit hilarious. But the bodyguard quickly snatches it back, and the customer keeps cursing as he leaves the shop. But wait, there's more. To show his anger, this guy grabs a harmless plant and throws it on the ground. Huh, $20 worth right there, bitches! Oh man, what did the plant do to him? Seriously, what did the plant ever do to you, man? And off he angrily storms away. It's never a dull day around here, is it? This next lady has real poor luck, but it does not excuse her behavior. Wait, wait. The door's right there. Have a good day. Because you got a big dude, you think you hot? So this lady storms into the store demanding her stuff back, which happens to be just two TVs. The receptionist asks her for some ID and tickets as proof. But this lady is completely clueless. I need your ID or the ticket. Uh, my what? She doesn't have any of those things. And here comes the shocker. Her boyfriend pawned off her belongings. Can you believe it? Now she wants them back, and it's a pretty messed up situation to be honest. She explains to the receptionist that she can't provide the required documents because her no good boyfriend isn't even around anymore. He left her high and dry. Ouch, that's gotta hurt. Now Ashley, who overhears the whole thing, initially sympathizes with this poor girl. But hold up, that sympathy doesn't last for long, and for good reason. I feel terrible for her, but I can't help her without her ticket. This customer suddenly loses her mind, like all the anger in the world has consumed her. And guess what she does next? Brace yourselves, people. She starts yelling and banging on the glass window, demanding her precious TV. Seriously, that's not how you get things done. Even if someone is trying to help you, no one will tolerate that kind of behavior. Ashley, understandably furious, tells her to back off. The situation gets so heated that Ashley has to step out of the room to confront this unruly customer. And guess what? This lady has the audacity to threaten Ashley. Well, Ashley isn't one to back down, so she tells her to get the heck out of the shop. This customer is beyond crazy, I tell you. It seems like she had a truckload of problems even before she set foot in the store. What? I dare you. You now, the bodyguard steps in to escort her out, but oh boy, this girl goes on a rampage. She knocks over everything in her path, completely enraged. Come on, girl, you seriously need to chill out. Bye! Bye, what? I said me! Uh Finally, they manage to get her out of the shop, but you won't believe what happens next. Unlike the previous guy who threw a plant, this woman tries not once, not twice, but three freaking times to break back into the store. I mean, seriously, woman, get a grip on yourself. This is just embarrassing for everyone involved. But damn it, we're not your local psychologist, neither. Go, sis! Even the bodyguard has had enough at this point, and he can only imagine what kind of crazy exchange must have taken place. Man, oh man, what a wild scene that must have been. This next guy is the most polite guy you'll see, but things take an interesting turn. I'm trying to help you solve like, what your you issue. Mean? What you mean? Well, 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 folks, let me tell you about this wild encounter that went down, starting with a seemingly innocent greeting. Hey, Hi. how are you? I'm good, how are you? Oh, well, actually, I'm not doing so good. Little did anyone know, trouble was brewing. You see, this poor customer was feeling down because his dear grandma had passed away. He needed to sell something urgently to scrape together enough cash to cover his rent. Now that's a tough spot to be in, right? 
Enter Ashley, a real gem of a person. She genuinely empathized with this guy and offered a helping hand. So the dude decides to sell his late grandma's ring, thinking it's made of real gold and worth a fortune. Ashley, being the responsible gal she is, takes a good look at the ring to verify its authenticity. And guess what? It's not the real deal, folks. It's as fake as a knockoff Rolex. Okay. Um, do you have anything? Naturally, Ashley breaks the news to the guy and asks if he's got anything else to pawn instead. But this fella, he ain't buying it. He's convinced that Ashley's got it all wrong, and he wasted his precious time chatting with her. Well, hold your horses, buddy. Ashley calmly reassures him that his time wasn't wasted and suggested he could pawn his TV instead. But oh boy, this suggestion hit a nerve. He starts acting all weird and uncooperative, throwing a tantrum. TV. You can pawn your TV. What the f I look like? Now, here's where things get intense. Ashley's just trying her darn best to help this guy out, but he's not having it. He demands his ring back and starts searching for someone else to deal with. I'm trying to do whatever I can to help him. This f not making no sense. And when Ashley tries to explain that she's simply doing her job to lend a hand, it's like a switch flip inside this guy's head. He goes ballistic, questioning Ashley's every move and acting all erratic. It's honestly a bit scary, folks. Believe it or not, this fella has the audacity to tell Ashley to lower her voice, even though he's the one causing all the ruckus. Talk about pushing boundaries. He even has the nerve to put his hand on her face trying to belittle her. And get this, he's not even listening. Lower your voice. Don't lower your tell voice. Me lower what your to voice. Do. Lower Don't your voice. Your... He's busy with his threats, making Ashley's job even harder. But our girl Ashley, bless her heart, stands her ground like a champ. But wait for it, folks. Here comes the jaw dropping twist. Out of nowhere, a hero emerges. Bam! This mysterious stranger slams our angry customer to the ground, WWE style. Can you believe it? And that's not all, folks. This hero then grabs the unruly fella and drags him out of the place. Because guess what? The dude still won't quit. On the ground. On the ground. On the, the ground, mother He keeps up with his nonsense, making threats and vowing to return for more. Seriously, what on earth did Ashley ever do to deserve this kind of treatment? It's downright mind-boggling, folks. Well, the last person on this list is no less than any other irrational person than earlier. If the item was worth the money, I would give her money, but he was a loud mouth. It's just another ordinary day at the shop when this woman walks in, hoping to make some quick cash by selling her jewelry. Pretty common scenario, right? How you doing? I'm good. Trying to find this here. Well, here's the twist. It's also quite common for people to claim that their jewelry is real, when in fact, it's not. But it all depends on how they react when they find out the truth. Now, this particular woman already seems a bit agitated as she approaches the counter to sell her rose gold earrings. Les, the shopkeeper, takes a look at the earrings and bluntly informs her that the color is not real. Surprise, surprise. I can feel you. Okay, so what's up? They're not real. Uh. The woman didn't see that coming. Les goes on to explain why the color is faded, indicating that the earrings are not made of real gold. Now, you'd expect her to accept the reality and move on, right? Nope, not this lady. Instead, she comes up with a lame response like, well, duh, that's because it's rose gold. Seriously? I mean, it's common knowledge that when the color starts fading on real gold, it's a clear sign that it's not genuine. But this woman insists it's two-tone rose gold, while Les insists it's just some base metal. They were just base metal. It's not gold. Base metal is going to turn colors when you put chemicals on Come on, lady, listen to the expert here instead of getting all rude. The fact is, base metal changes colors, not real gold. It's pretty clear that this woman just wants some money and has the audacity to demand $200 for those earrings. And as if being rude wasn't enough, she starts hurling abuse at poor Les. That real rose gold earrings, man, I need $200 right now. What the Talk about being confused and disrespected. I can't blame Les for not taking that kind of nonsense. So the bodyguard steps in to escort the woman out of the shop. But guess what? She keeps insisting that she wants her money and even asks the bodyguard to check the earrings again. Seriously, lady, drop it already. Here's the funny part, and you'll never guess what Les did next. Hey, yeah. You want me to wrap these up? Yes, he did that. I mean, why bother with someone who refuses to listen, right? Eventually, the woman is escorted out by Les and the bodyguard, but she doesn't give up that easily. She actually tries to break into the shop not once, 
Not twice, but three times. I can't help but feel secondhand embarrassment for her. It's like witnessing pure insanity. Oh, no. out. I had to put He's out. In conclusion, this woman's behavior was out of line. Instead of accepting the truth and moving on, she chose to be rude, abusive, and persistent. It's a good thing Les and the bodyguard stood their ground and didn't let her disrupt the shop. Let's hope she learns a lesson from this and thinks twice before causing such a scene in the future. My dad so truly believed that this glass could be something. Space for years. <laughs> you never know what surprises will walk through that door. Today we've got Seth bringing in something that's blowing everyone's mind. And boy is he in for a shock. Our friend Penny rolls in with a rare 83 T-top cutlass, low rider frames, and a fully customized beauty. Whoa, whoa, whoa! This is the stuff dreams are made of. These babies are like finding a needle in a haystack these days. And you can see Seth's eyes light up with excitement. Easy there, Seth. Don't get too carried away. We see all types of old cars come through the store. Does it do the four-wheel hop? It could if you wanted it to. This amazing car is decked out with four switches and can hop up to 72 inches in the front. And guess what? If you're up for it, it can even do a four-wheel hop. Talk about a versatile ride. If you wanted it to, it hurt. it's equipped to, but it's very rare we see a tricked out car that actually jumps off the ground. This car is the real deal, folks. It's got all the bells and whistles you could imagine. How often do you come across a fully equipped ride like this? Seth can't help but admit that it's incredibly rare to see a car that's not only fully customized, but can also jump off the ground. He can't resist showing off, telling us about the car's four hydraulic pumps and a whopping 14 deep cycle batteries. More batteries mean more power, right? Seth and his buddy can't resist the temptation to hop in and experience it firsthand. And let me tell you, they are having a blast. <laughs> now, Seth really wants this car, but he wants it at the right price. Penny, on the other hand, is hoping to fetch $12,000 for it. Will Seth bite the bullet and make the deal? Well, here's the twist. How about uh, four grand? Seth is only willing to dish out four grand for it. Whoa, talk about a huge drop. You can see the disappointment on Penny's face. He explains that he spent four grand just on the paint job alone. After some negotiation, Penny agrees to settle for 10 grand. But Seth tries to push it further, offering $7,000. You know he wants it. Everything. It's very rare we see a tricked out car that actually jumps off the ground. Penny, being the wise guy he is, doesn't take the deal. In the end, they part ways on good terms. Well, folks, let's hope Penny finds another buyer who's willing to meet his price for this fully customized car. It's always a thrill to see unique items like this in the pawn shop. And who knows what will come through those doors next. Stay tuned for more pawn shop adventures. But here comes another gem-filled day at Les's pawn shop. We have a woman who's brought in some stones she discovered at her late grandmother's house. Her goal? To gather enough cash to cover her dear grandma's funeral expenses. Poor thing, she's not quite sure about the value of these stones and is expecting to receive a modest sum for them. Younger. How much did you want for these? Anything would help, like 50 or $100. Enter Ashley, who wants to assist but has serious doubts about the authenticity of these gems. On the who knows what other surprises await us in the future? Stay tuned, folks, because the adventure at Les's Pawn Shop is far from over. Hold on to your seats because this next guy is about to unleash some of the rarest goodies on the market. Five, six, Brace yourselves, space geeks, because this is going to blow your mind. So, this guy rolls up with a bunch of crates, and let me tell you, the anticipation is real. Got a couple things. Uh, I have some Star Trek things, and I also have things from NASA. He's got some seriously cool stuff from the Star Trek universe, and even NASA. I mean, come on, that's pretty awesome. It's clear that this dude is a space enthusiast through and through, and his collection is off the charts. Honestly, it's a total flex. Like, seriously, you gotta take a look at this thing. This is all the kind of stuff that you're into. Now, here's the kicker. Ashley confesses that she and her brother aren't exactly diehard Star Trek fans. But guess what? Every time they get anything Star Trek related in their shop, it flies off the shelves. I'm not a Trekkie girl. My brother's not a Trekkie guy. But when we get Star Trek stuff in here, it flies off. Talk about a lucky break, huh? 
This guy managed to gather all these valuable items from various Star Trek conventions across the country, thanks to his gig as a truck driver. Talk about dedication to the cause. But wait, it gets even better. He pulls out this kit from Paramount Studios, which is a seriously impressive piece in his collection. To give to radio station to run ads for the show. It's an authentic set that was sent to a TV executive when Deep Space Nine first hit the screens. Now that's some next level stuff right there. You can't help but appreciate the sheer coolness of it all. Here's the catch though. All this awesomeness comes at a price, and Seth, our shop owner, is taken aback by the asking price. This was a thousand? Yes. Wow. We? A thousand dollars? Yes. We. Why? Why is that so Because much? it's custom built, and it all lights up and works. The guy wants a whopping $1,200 for everything, unless ever the savvy negotiator tries to bring it down to $700. It seems like a stalemate, but fear not, because Ashley steps in with her clever thinking. After some intense back and forth, Ashley manages to strike a deal. Seven, eight hundred. She works her magic and secures all these incredible items for just eight hundred dollars. Can you believe it? Talk about a happy ending. Everyone walks away satisfied. The customer gets a fair price, and our shop owners have some killer new additions to their inventory. Who knew that a truck driver with a passion for Star Trek could bring so much excitement to our little shop? It just goes to show you never know what surprises are waiting around the corner. I kid you not, this next guy just pulled up with a true gem. Check your taxi cab. I don't know about the original miles. Meter still. Can you even fathom it? It's none other than a 1982 checkered cab. Whoa, now that's what I call antique. Take a gander at this beauty. It's in remarkable condition. It's evident that the owner showered this car with lots of love and care. Kudos to him. Did you call for a cab? Did you call for a cab? Now, hold on to your hats because there's more to this story. Our daring duo, Les and Seth, decided to peek under the hood. Lo and behold, their jaws drop. Look at that thing purr. Don't you lose money because you get there quicker and it all goes. The engine looks splendid, almost brand new. How cool is that? But wait, there's a fascinating tidbit about this cab. Back in the day, they used to write the rates right on the taxi door itself. Talk about genius. This way, the rates were fixed, making it easier to attract customers. It's a shame we don't see this kind of thoughtful detail nowadays. The door. Did well, you see the rates on the door? I yeah, I did. The shut up one is one I like. And guess what? This car enthusiast doesn't just have one of these incredible cabs, but a whopping total of four. Four, my friends. And out of all his prized possessions, he decided to part ways with one and sell it to this very pawn shop. As long as the price is right and it's in good condition, we can make a profit. Boy, oh boy. Les and Seth should count their lucky stars. Now brace yourselves for the asking price. This customer is seeking a jaw-dropping $10,000. Can you believe it? Les being the inquisitive one questions the reason behind such a hefty sum for what seems to be a mere antique car. Sensibly, Seth suggests that the customer take the car for a spin, just to ensure everything is running smoothly. Perhaps then they'll be able to negotiate a fair price. Good thinking, Seth. Less ever the insightful one recognizes that this is not just any ordinary car. It's a masterpiece, a truly unique item. Plus, considering its excellent condition, they can actually turn a profit from it. However, much to their disappointment, the customer refuses to budge below $8,500. Sadly, no deal can be made today. Nonetheless, Les wishes him luck, and we join him in hoping that the right buyer comes along for this exceptional ride. Fingers crossed, this next guy brought in something, and you won't believe what it is. You want nine fifty? This guy walked in all eager to sell something big, and boy did he deliver. When he unveiled the item, everyone's jaws hit the floor. Well, I hear you guys buy silver. We do. That's a silver surfer. I'm talking about a life-size silver surfer from the Fantastic Four. Can you believe it? This thing is massive and made entirely of silver. It's a sight to behold. Now, let me fill you in on the backstory. This customer explains that this Silver Surfer was actually a display piece for the movie Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. They made a total of 1,500 of these bad boys. Can you imagine? But here's the kicker. Is it actually silver? This is literally just a regular mannequin and plywood. The customer reveals that this is just a regular mannequin covered in a vacuum metal plastic wrap. 
He actually got it from a movie theater where he used to advertise. And get this, he owns his own comic book store. The theater I advertise at, and I own a comic book store. Mm -hmm. I said, and that's how he managed to convince the set designer to let him take it home. And the next day, it was proudly displayed in his shop for the next five years. Talk about a cool collector's item. Now hold on to your seats, because things are about to get interesting. This guy is asking for a whopping $2,000 for the Silver Surfer. And let me tell you, he seems pretty darn admin about it. Like, take a look at this. I want $2,000 for it. Why? Ashley, always the one to ask the tough questions, wonders why it's priced so high. The customer confidently explains that outline. It's actually valued at $3,000, and he wants a fair price for it. Oh, and here's a fun fact for you. The Silver Surfer was actually voted one of the top 50 most recognizable comic book heroes in America. Pretty cool, huh? Ashley, being the shrewd businesswoman she is, gives the customer a reality check. She offers him a lesser amount for it, stating that it's the best she can do. But the customer stands his ground and refuses to go below $1,000. That's quite a gap to bridge. Willing to buy this from you for 500. But then in comes Seth, our resident genius manipulator. What he does next and how he convinces the customer will truly shock you. Yes, did you see that? He slyly takes out the money, slaps it on the desk right in front of the customer, and presents him with a take-it-or-leave-it offer of $900. The tension is palpable. What do you think this man will do? Take it or leave it. It's clear that he's holding out for a higher price. Hey, sometimes you gotta stick to your guns. Well, after giving it some serious thought, the customer ultimately did decide this. It's a pleasure. We're gonna go surfing on home. See you later. And walked away from the deal. But wait, there's more. You think Les will let him walk away like this? Les has something up his sleeve, and he does this. Go where I want it. If you're gonna walk for $50, you're gonna pack it back up, you're gonna take it back. Well, after mulling it over, the customer finally caved in and agreed to Les's offer. That's the kind of influence Les has, folks. Somehow, people just can't resist his charm. Now, with everyone on the same page, they can all happily move forward. It's smooth sailing from here on out. Jack, Jack, get the f out of here. Yeah, I know you like you're gonna get your hands off. Really? Me. You know what? I never liked you. Ass. I literally. You, 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 you got me. No, I'm sitting by myself, my man. Sitting by myself, my man. No, I call I'm sure you're curious about what happened. So let's not waste any time and jump right into it. So this customer walks into the pawn shop looking visibly upset. As usual, Ashley greets him and asks how he's doing. Turns out he's not doing well at all. Here's the reason why. Man, I'm not doing so good. No? My grandma just passed. I'm sorry. Oh, I was like... It's really sad to hear about it. Now, he brings along a ring that belonged to his grandmother. He wants to pawn this ring because he plans to retrieve it once he earns enough money. How sweet, right? However, it turns out that the ring is fake, which surprises the customer. Now, this got me thinking. Is he pretending or is he genuinely serious? It's hard to trust people these days, you know? But Ashley comes up with a solution to help him out by pawning his television. Can you guess what his response was? Me. What the f I look like pawning my TV? He starts getting rude with Ashley, which escalates into a heated argument. Then he demands his ring back, and not only that, he insists on being helped by another employee because he's annoyed with Ashley. And guess what happens next? Put your finger in my face! Don't put your finger in my face! Yep, that's how he ended up there. Crazy, isn't it? This customer's behavior became even more disrespectful. Just to prove that Ashley was completely wrong and useless, that's when, as you saw, the big guy steps in and knocks him down. But he continues to yell and curse at her. Eventually, Byron forcefully removes him from the shop. You got me up. up. No, let's go. Uh, man, let down. me go. Fuck let me go, up. man. Just when he thought everything had settled down, the customer goes ahead and threatens Ashley, saying he'll come back to get her. Oh dear, that's the biggest mistake he made since entering the shop. We all know what happens when someone messes with Ashley, right? Well, brace yourself and see it for yourself. On the ground. On the ground. Let On the ground. ground. Dang, the customer was literally scared for his life. Next up, it was just another normal day at this famous pawn shop called American Jewelry and Loan. 
located right in the heart of Detroit, USA. And in walks a customer ready to pick a fight with anyone that is about to come his way. Yikes, that already sounds like inviting trouble. But let us see where this goes. This fake ass too, Thank over you here. very much. Put me out. Have a nice he walks into the store, and you can already see the attitude on his face. He walks into the store and approaches Leslie, who is just back in the store from his surgery. He comes in with his Xbox and immediately tells Les that he needs to get as much money as he possibly can for it. Like, obviously, that is clearly what everyone is here for at the pawn shop. He knew that they probably get a lot of Xboxes anyway, so that does not set him apart from the rest of the regular customers. When Les asked what he needed it for, this guy had quite a story to tell. And it is definitely a full-fledged roller coaster. He reveals that he needs as much cash as possible, and it is all for his girlfriend. Why, you ask? Because she got locked up in jail and he had to bail her out. I bet nobody saw that coming. This dude walks in and starts spilling some seriously bizarre beans. Now, Les wasn't sure if this guy was pulling his leg or being dead serious. But being the champ he is, he decided to hear him out anyway. So, here's the deal. This customer claims that his girlfriend, who happens to be a dancer, got nabbed by the cops the other night. And get this, they're accusing her of being involved in, wait for it, prostitution. Yeah, you heard that right. But our friend here is absolutely convinced that there's no way in heck that his lady is mixed up in that kind of stuff. Or maybe, just maybe, he's living in denial. Tough spot to be in, huh? I don't know about you, but I'm itching to find out what happens next in this mind-boggling tale. Will the truth come out? Is this guy delusional or are the cops mistaken? And here's what they had to say to justify his beliefs. That's, that's a lie. She's a really good girl. I love her. Okay. She cleans, she cooks. She's nice. Well, I do not know about you, but cooking and cleaning does not make anybody a saint in the slightest. And when it came to striking a deal, the guy said all he needed was $300, as if it was a small amount. And Les was clearly not here for his unreasonable demands. Take a look at his reaction. I need 300 bucks. I can go 80 bucks. Oh my God. I need 300. Immediately, this customer gets enraged and begins demanding $300 for his Xbox, as if he was in a position to mark the prices. Here is what went down at the pawn shop. 300 bucks, dog. You don't have to raise your voice at me, you. The customer then starts cussing at not only Leslie, but literally everyone in the shop just because he got annoyed at the price Les stated, which was $80, which is way far from a whopper of $300. He even put his finger on Leslie's face, and that is when he knew it was time for this guy to leave, and he did not make it easy or go away quietly. Take a look at what went down. Thank you very much. Get this fake ass too, Thank over you here. very much. Put me out. Have a nice well, at least they wished him a good day. Moving on to the next. You talking to? All right, folks, let me set the scene for you. We got Sharonda and her son, Deontay, strolling into the pawn shop on a mission to get some bling bling for a special occasion. You see, it's Sharonda's birthday, and she's all about treating herself to some classic, fabulous jewelry. She's pumped, she's excited, she's ready to sparkle. But hold up, here comes Deontay acting like he couldn't care less. This kid's got an attitude and thinks he knows it all. He's annoying both his mom and Seth, the helpful employee trying to assist Sharonda in finding that perfect piece. Can you believe it? Talk about a party pooper. A pair of earrings catches her eyes, and she takes a look at it and asks for the price, to which Seth replies, $500. Except her son was in total shock over the price. Take a look at his reaction. That's a lot. That wouldn't even cost that much at a jewelry, regular jewelry store. Well, that's okay. I like no, it. we're not regular jewelry store. It's actually cheaper than you'd get it anywhere else. Seth was clearly annoyed at this boy's remarks because, obviously, he knew what he was doing, and his comments were not helping with the purchase. He kept saying that it would be cheaper at a regular jewelry store, when in fact, it was way cheaper here at the pawn store. Clearly, he did not understand the concept of it. Seth asked the guy where he usually went shopping, and when he said the mall, he asked the guy if that is where he got his earrings from. And get this, he paid $500 for it. So if he can buy earrings for that much money, why can't his own mother? All right, guys, brace yourselves for the next chapter in Sharonda's jewelry adventure. So she's browsing through the sparkling goodies and finds another piece that catches her eye. This time, it's a real beauty. But guess what? It comes with a price tag of a whopping $800. And let me tell you, Deontay's reaction? Yeah, it did not go over well. Not one bit. 
You gotta see this, folks. The tension in the air is thicker than molasses as Sharonda reveals her newfound treasure to her son. The look on his face says it all. Let's just say he wasn't exactly thrilled about the price tag. Things are getting real interesting now. Take a look. Hey, Hunter. Listen, you need to shut up before I knock you to for real. Sharonda finally loses her cool and tells her son to keep quiet because it is her birthday and she is allowed to pick out whatever she likes and he definitely does not get any say in this. Seth comes to her defense too and tells the son that it's her birthday and her money so she gets to make her choice. And then things take a turn for the worse when the son finds this out. So you spent 500 on those earrings? Yeah. They're CZ's. Watch your mouth. But that's bull How the hell is he gonna tell me that? Look. Oh boy, things are about to hit the fan. Picture this, our buddy here, he's all excited about his new earrings, only to discover that they're as fake as a $3 bill. And let me tell you, he is not a happy camper. The anger starts bubbling up inside him, and guess who bears the brunt of his frustration? Poor Seth, the pawn shop employee, gets hit with some seriously rude behavior. But hold up, Sharonda ain't having any of that nonsense. She's not about to tolerate her son's terrible attitude. So I don't know who the you think you talking to, boo-boo, but you got me up. That's bull You don't talk to me like that. All right. She even goes to take her slippers off to hit him. But by then, everyone in the store starts to stare at them, and it does not go well. She was hot. Who the f is what you what talking you to? Who the f is you talking to, boo? She quite literally chased him out of the store. And that is what you get if you make your mom angry on her birthday, I guess. It's time to dive into this next customer named Michael, a regular at the pawn store who comes in with all kinds of things and tries to make them believe that it's something fancy and expensive. Except it never, ever is. Oh, what is it? As soon as he walks in, Ashley says, it's this guy again, which just shows us he comes in every other day trying to dupe them. You would hope by now he has realized that it is of no use trying to dupe them into taking his stuff. Hold up, guys. We've got some serious history brewing here. Turns out one of the employees spills the tea and reveals that there's some major bad blood between these two. You see, there was this one incident where the employee refused to buy Michael's stuff. And ever since then, whenever Michael walks into the store, he can't help but unleash a storm of snarky comments and rude behavior towards the poor employee. But here's the thing, folks. That employee was just doing their job. It's a classic case of drama and tension in the workplace. Buckle up, because we're about to witness the clash of these two titans in the crazy world of hardcore pawn. This time, Michael approached Ashley and tells her that he has a mink coat for her. She immediately asked him if he had brought it in before, and he said he had not, but it was obvious to everyone except Michael that she did not buy a word he was saying. She was even more confused because it was the middle of summer and he had just brought in a fluffy thick jacket. And when she asked him if he had looked outside lately, this is what he had to say. Did you take a look outside recently? Oh, it's cold out there. Her face definitely says it all. Just to see if he was being for real, she asked him how he knew it was me. And to that, he had the most ridiculous response. He said he just knew by touching it lightly. Ashley, however, immediately recognized it was not Mink. She told him it was Silver Fox and not even close to Mink. So maybe he does not know it by just touching and looking. He even smells the coat and says that is Mink for sure. When Ashley and the other employee take a closer look at it, they realize that the coat is actually ripped. And when they asked him about it, he had quite the answer prepared. Take a look. I was walking up here. Who knows? Laugh. Man, laugh louder if you're going to smile. That was for sure not a normal reaction. The employee tells him that every time he comes in, it's something new, and almost all the time, it is useless junk. Michael did not react well to being accused of this, though, because he went off on the employee. What'd you say? Okay, you know okay, what? okay, you cannot. You know what? I don't, you know what? I never liked you. The whole shop notices his angry rants, and very quickly, the bouncers come to take him away before he causes any more of a ruckus than he already had. Ashley and the other employees both go outside to see what he's saying and Ashley even asked him why he was being so rude to the employee when he had clearly done nothing wrong here. Every time I walk in and out, all I hear is, man, who's that bald ass? Get the f out of here. Well, are you gonna make your way in and way? You, you're not gonna do it, uh, he will. After all his visits to the store, he definitely had this coming his way. And finally, down to the number one worst customer. 
This customer was being disrespectful and disgusting at the store, and someone finally put him in place. Whew. I mean, you understand yeah, that? I got you. Don't f with my yeah, I'm kid. Sorry. I'm sorry, man. You don't f I'm with sorry. my kid. He walks in and notices a table and immediately just announces to no one in particular that somebody needed to come to help him out with it. That's really not a nice way to ask. Jeez. Take a look at how he was behaving. Let me lay on this mother. You see, this is a sex table. So this is what? He was being very crude, and Ashley notices his presence there very quickly, especially considering how loud he was being. He again keeps shouting for someone to come help him, and then you won't believe this. But he asks for Ashley in person and says she is his girl. Take a look at what he was saying, or rather shouting. Ashley, man, that's my girl. Yeah, I want Ashley, man. That's my oh boy, get a load of this, guys. Ashley was absolutely disgusted by what was going down. Turns out this dude we're talking about is a regular at the store, and he's always spewing disrespectful comments left and right. But here's the twist. Most of those nasty remarks are aimed right at Ashley herself. Can you believe it? But wait, there's more. This time, he's taking his craziness to a whole new level, and Ashley's never seen him act this bonkers before. He asks her what the table cost, and when she tries to reply, he says something completely horrible that caught everyone's attention. What you want for this table, girl? Actually... Get your ass over here and shut up. Yeah. The moment she spots this guy on the table, she's like, yo, get off, dude. But he's not having it. He keeps telling her to shut up or get lost. That's when the bouncers step in, swooping in like superheroes to have her back in a flash. But here's the kicker, my friends. Even after all that, he still won't quit with the rudeness. He's talking down to her like he owns her or something. And let me tell you, she's beyond upset. She's furious at the way she's being treated just because she's a woman. Take a look at what he's doing in the store. No, no, you shut. be quiet. Look, come this way, baby. Who do you think you are to talk to me like Bro, that? Bro, if he let me, I'll be slapping. Yo, hold up, people. Leslie catches wind of all the chaos and rushes in to see what the heck is going down. And let me tell you, he's in for a 